I'm Erica. And I'm CJ. And you're listening to the Her Podcast. Today's episode, we sit down with Heather Kehoe, a multi-talented real estate agent, podcast host, and a passionate women's empowerment coach who specializes in teaching others how to have boundaries over burnout. Heather is a free thinking mama, a burnout survivor, and a devoted advocate for women's growth, both personally and professionally. Her journey is one that encapsulates resilience and the transformative power of boundaries. With her business, the Hustle Culture Hater Club, Heather has become a beacon for those seeking to grow without sacrificing their well-being family, or mental health. Her personal story of navigating burnout and emerging stronger is truly inspiring. In our conversation today, we go all over the place. We talk about Heather's personal experience with burnout, the pivotal moments that led to her breaking point, what that looked like mentally and physically, and of course, how she's using boundaries to have success in her business. We love Heather and we know you're going to love her energy, so enjoy. We're so excited. We don't even have notes on the table because Mm-mm. we really enjoy chatting with you and building. We we, I know we've just mm-hmm. like, I feel like we've just jived right from the minute we kind of all met. Yeah. yeah. Um, so we're really excited to talk to you about H C H C. Yes. Oh, and just your journey and yes. life and things that you've been through. Yeah. And right? I was thinking on the way out here about that. Mm. And I'm like, I just feel, I just turned 49 on friday and i'm like happy birthday <laughs> happy birthday to you, to you. um but honestly <laughs> no it's just your water bottle so aggressive <laughs> um actually i am known for the this water bottle uh it's and as it, big as her personality totally and and you can use it as a protective like weapon oh this is okay um, that's true yeah 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 so i was driving out here and i was thinking about that and i'm like you know i'm really just getting started that's mm, how i feel like i'm on. really just getting started and thinking back to like years ago when it was like 49 that's old like well, I, I think that's the reel you posted because that's what i was thinking of oh, didn't you post a reel being like yeah where i where i thought i would be or what oh totally like, yeah totally and i think about that and i'm like my 20 year old self wow if i could go back there because when I was thinking, oh, when I'm 49, I'm going to be like, have this, and I'm going to be this, and, and it's like, yeah, I've, none of, <laughs> nothing goes as planned. That's my life. <laughs> but it works out. Okay, so I'm very interested, because we've had some conversations, and I think we're just going to go everywhere today. Do yeah. it. Um, I want to ask, yeah, a little bit about your story, mm-hmm. and about, like, your inner career, and we don't have to talk about what that career is, but your yeah. inner career, mm-hmm. um, and I'm curious on what life was like before you embraced getting rid of hustle culture mm-hmm. before you embraced boundaries? I'm like, how do I yeah. word this? Like, Cause do, HCHC, yeah. let's quickly say what this is. Yeah. The hustle culture hater club. And that was, um, that was born out of years after going through a burnout and realizing like there is a better way. Um, cause, and, and it still, it drives me nuts when people are like, you just gotta hustle, just hustle. And I'm like, let me tell you a story yeah, about you how that, you, you, you know, know like goes. how, how hustling and, and, and that again comes from, you know, the media loves to, and social media love to tell us that the only way to make it in any career is to just, you know, hashtag no days off 24 seven hustle and grind. And I got caught up in that. And, um, you know what, I didn't think when I think back to it, because it's so surreal, when you go through a massive, massive burnout, you, it's, it's hard to really describe it to people, except that I was so wired and tired. Like it was, it was just that at the same time. And I thought it was normal because that's all I ever knew, right? That's that it was programmed into me that to survive and to be successful in the air quotes, that's how you have to do it. I want to know what, I mean, I know you just said it's hard to describe and it's wired and tired, but I'm like, what physically did burnout look like for you and what got you there? Yeah. Okay. So 2010 was when it all really came down and leading up to that, I would say there was so many signs leading up to it. But again, I was like, I'm just tired. Well, that's how you're supposed to feel. And again, thinking back to then, I was a total different person than who I am now. Yeah. Like 100%. I'm a total different person than I was five years ago, but 
to 2010, I was like, it's like looking back on a movie. Mm -hmm. It's like watching a movie and you're like, well, I was starring in that, but I don't remember playing that part, right? Like it's real, but it, it's surreal. Mm. And so leading up to it, I was living this life. I was um, I was married to a different, <laughs> sounds like, well, I was married to a different guy than I am now, but married to my first husband. We were together since we were like early, early 20s. Um, and it was, you know, it wasn't really ever a really super great relationship from the beginning. I remember almost calling off our wedding two days before our wedding. Wow. wow. Right. And at, if that was me now, it would be like mass text, weddings off. Mm. But being at the age I was, it was like, what are people going to think? There's no way. We've already paid. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, it's just cold feet, whatever. So, I mean, and after 17 years, I mean, not every. <laughs> Dave was bad. We have two like amazing daughters and we get along, you know, quite well. But that whole time that I was in that marriage, I knew, A, I knew it was never going to last. Mm. That was the thing. And I also was like, I was very caught up in the optics of that marriage and the people we were surrounding ourselves with. Um, I was truly being somebody I wasn't. It was like I was always trying to impress people with whether the material items that I bought and, you know, or the job that I was in or just constantly, like it was so, so much of a facade is, is the way I can describe it. But I went along with it and when you get that feeling, and I always say, you know what, the body doesn't lie, right? Like it, you feel it and it's like in that pit of your stomach that you're like, something isn't right to me, but this is all I know. And at that time, not a lot of people were into like energy work. Like that was just considered so woo woo. But I was always like, I was so drawn to that all the time. And so I would go and I'd visit with healers and I'd, you know, tell them like, this is how I'm feeling. And we'd get super deep and I'd come home to, you know, a guy who he had, he just thought it was nuts. Um, and you begin to, to think that you begin to think like, okay, am I, like, <laughs> is there something wrong upstairs or what is going like, but just still, I felt something wasn't right, but I kept pushing forward pushing forward and the more I can say you can lie to everybody else you cannot lie to yourself mm. because it catches up with you and so going through that like when people ask me was there a one thing that triggered you and I, I can't think of anything specifically it was a buildup of many many things that I did not deal with in my life from the time that I was you know stuff I went through when I was a teenager um, you know just traumas that were never really resolved. Mm. And I just kept pushing them, pushing them down. And I was running myself like just like it, it was a hamster on a wheel. It was like I've, I'm nothing was ever enough for me. Mm -hmm. It was never enough money. It was never enough friends that weren't even really your friends, right? There was never enough events to go to to be seen. There was never enough, like it was just nothing was ever enough. And I started to put business ahead of everything and I remember like thinking back and I like I'm sorry to my sister for this I think I've apologized to her a million times but I was hosting her um bridal shower and I got a call from a client and I left hmm. the bridal shower and and you know what I thought that was normal I'm like no because that's just that's just the industry. That's what I'm supposed to do. And thinking back to it now, I'm like, that is so toxic. Mm -hmm. But I needed to go through all of that and needed to feel, it was almost like it was my validation, mm -hmm. right? The busyness, the needing to feel needed because I wasn't getting that from relationships and other things. So I was looking for this validation. Well, I think that's an important piece to point out because I think a lot of people are sometimes busy and hustle and these types yeah. of things and don't realize that it's actually a mechanism to cover up, you know, something totally. else. 
totally. right? Which is seeking validation. Yeah. yeah. And I, and I feel like, okay, I get it. We're all like busy. I feel like busy is such a real overused word. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know. Like, like when puke. I ask somebody, well, how are you doing? I'm so, I'm busy. I'm like, yeah. That's um, not what I asked. That's actually not an emotion. That's actually not a feeling. <laughs> Hello. It's an action. Mm, yeah. And what does it actually mean? Yeah. What does it's it? It's really lost its meaning. It, it has, right? And the, it's that connection piece. I lost connection. I lost connection. with Everything was surface. Everything was it's so weird talking about it because it's like, again, it's like, did that really happen to me? And... So, you know, the more that you start pushing down your true, true, authentic self, and that's like, whether you want to call it your soul's purpose, your higher self, your, you know, human design, whatever it is, the more you push it down, it's only going to bubble to the surface and it's going to be really, really bad. Or you're going to turn to other vices to kind of soothe that. So whether it's, you know, alcohol, drugs, working workaholic is the same thing um and and so that's what i did i turned to work i drank a lot we partied a lot um and to the point where i started to have what i know now were panic attacks mm. Ooh, yeah but i did not know that there was such a thing i thought well, that terminology probably wasn't oh not widely used. Even. No, yeah. no. And I remember the first panic attack. It was woke up from like asleep and I couldn't breathe. And I thought I'm having a heart attack. This is it. It's my heart murmur. <laughs> Something's happening. And I remember going outside and telling my husband at that time, okay, this is how I feel. Okay. Cause I'm thinking I'm, I'm dying. So if I pass out, this is how I feel, A, B, and C to tell, you know, the paramedics, blah, blah, blah. And then it went away. And then I ignored it, Mm -hmm. right? And then they started happening more and more frequently, but not as intense. And I kept ignoring them. Because again, it's like, I'm just tired. You know, I'm looking after little kids. I'm running this business, blah, blah, blah. I'm making excuses. And um, now you have to remember all this time that this is happening, I'm not in a great marriage. Yeah. Right. So there's other things going on. And um, <laughs> I have to say, when you go through a massive burnout and, you know, mental breakdown, whatever you want to call it, that person you're with, it's not easy on them. Mm-hmm. So I have to say, you know what? <laughs> it, and he didn't know how to deal with it. Yeah. Right. Um, but when it actually, when it all came crashing down, it was the day before Mother's Day. Um, in 2010 and I was I'd be driving on the highway and especially at night and I'd feel like these cars were coming into my lane like it was almost like hallucinations it was so wild and the morning before Mother's Day I got up went to the gym and I'm again because I'm obsessed with everything I'm obsessed with working out I'm obsessed with how I look I'm obsessed with what I eat I'm obsessed with like money materialism like it was like it, it's i need to write a book about this actually because <laughs> you're like it's a lot it's a lot to unpack but i got up that morning i went to the gym i backed out and a guy backed into me and i remember just bawling it was like the floodgates just open and i came home and i went in the shower and i just i could not stop crying and it was like this darkness of everything that has ever happened to me and every lie I was living just came at me. And I remember saying to my husband at that time, like, you need to take me to the doctor. And we went, of course, they're like, just go on meds, you'll be okay. And I was like, no, no, there is, I am not having, going through a burnout, I am not having a mental breakdown. Uh, there's something wrong with me. I have a brain tumor. I have something wrong with me because that's my personality. Mm-hmm. And I spent a year of barely leaving my home mm-hmm. except to go to different specialists because I was in such denial that I 
could have let myself get to this point. And um, it was, it was, I, I say it's the best and the worst year of my life because it completely changed everything. But the, the thoughts that go through your head when you are in that place are so horrific. And they're just, um, you know, it, it seems like it wasn't real, but it was very real going through it. I'm curious at this time because you've built this whole life, Mm -hmm. right? And then you're like, I'm not going out for basically anything. What happened to your job at the time? Did you take time off? Yeah, I was, um, like, what did you do so you could almost start to like, yeah. leave? Yeah. Medical so, leave? So that that was a switch in careers, actually. Mm. Yeah. That, w- that was a switch in careers. And, um, you know, it's funny because I feel like we could go on for days about this because people think, oh, man, she must have totally figured it out then. I'm like, oh, no, I didn't. <laughs> no, I didn't, actually. Um which I think is an important to talk about yeah. because I think when people hit a hardship yeah. and then talk about that being the turning point, yeah. they don't realize that there's still like stumblings totally. you know, or going back to your old patterns and yeah. you can't just usually shed that overnight. No, no. And it was so at that time I was self-employed mm. in a different, um, a different career. And I basically was like, I, I can't, I actually like, I could not work. I was, the level of paranoia and like when when you ignore every single sign, your nervous system is, it's shot. Well, I was going to say not even just ignore. Maybe this is, maybe people are going to be like, Erica, that's the same, same thing. But I'm like, not just ignore, but deny. Oh, 100%. Do you know what I mean? Because I think yeah. there's one thing to ignore and to be like, I'm just not going to look, but almost to be like, to look at it and be like, no. Yeah. Like to deny the thing that's happening in your body. Yeah. When our bodies, I think we've been learning this a lot. Like our bodies are so smart and they're typically trying to protect us Yeah, and typically trying to help us. And then when we say no, and we go against that, that inner turmoil is just huge. A hundred percent. And I always tell people, like I, I tell women now, I'm like, you're like, the lying to yourself is just, it will catch up, right? But, um, oh God, I totally lost my train of thought no, there. No, okay. <laughs> you're okay. You're totally- <laughs> I was like so deep into that one. <laughs> I'm sorry. High five me. I went for a high five the and denial. you just ignored me. <laughs> Living no, well, in denial. I think the first step is probably come acceptance. Back. You know, yes. right? Like, so that we live in denial yeah. and then we have to accept what it is. And I think the other piece with burnout or illness in our bodies or any of these things is I like to call it, we go over speed bumps. Yeah. You know, your body is trying to be like, Hey, slow down or, yeah. you know, pay attention to this thing that's going on. And we're just like, yeah. you know, nope, keep yeah. going, you know? And yeah. I think maybe that's something you've now identified probably post Yes. burnout right yes. is what are those things to watch for for sure but you went through a second burnout yeah i just remembered yeah uh, <laughs> so when saying that like my personality was very strong very independent and so that was another reason it was so hard for me and it was it was easy for me to deny right because i'm like Mm-mm. this kind of stuff doesn't happen to women like me it only happens to weak women. Yeah. That, that, and that was like, oh man. And I'm like, I'm so embarrassed that I said that. And I hope I didn't say that to anybody. And if I did, I'm truly, truly sorry. Because I, I would say, honestly, nine times out of 10, it happens to women like me. Yes. Women who think we got everything together. We have, um, you know, we can do this all on our own. We don't need any help. Like we're strong. We're independent. No one sees us cry. <coughs> yeah. It's. I think it sneaks up on us. Yeah. And not being right? vulnerable. Like when I think of be, being vulnerable back then, I'm like, uh, no, like I was, I was very like stone. Mm-hmm. And, and that again was a, a just a huge reason for the denial. So what did burnout look like for you? So you had um, to obviously probably. <clears throat> yeah take a period on rest like were you able like unable to do things you know well yeah if you (laughs) it's wild because i would go to places because i again i'm still like in a bit of denial 
right? Yeah. I'm still like, nope. I seen, I went to neurologist. Like, I'm telling you, these doctors must have thought, like, this woman is, she's she is, trying to get answers. She is like, you don't have a brain tumor, Heather. Here is what's happening. But I saw, I mean, shamans, priests, um, you know, neurologists, gastrologists, uh, you name it. Like, I saw them till the point where I had a doctor. He, he was so amazing. He knew at the beginning. But he's like, you need to go on your journey. You need to figure this out. And I'm here when you need me. And he was so good. And after a year, I came back because my life at that point was barely going out. And when I did, I was so paranoid of everything, everything that I laugh about it now. Mm. And, you know, I, I remember things, but I, I don't quite remember them. Every, things were very, very irrational. Um, but that's when I really started to question a lot of things in my life, a lot of, you know, what really is my purpose here and, um, started to get pretty deep on working on me and still trying to be a mom of two kids who were, they were young at that time. Right. And I'm trying to hold this together. And there were times where it was so bad. And the thoughts were so bad that I can honestly say, if I did not have my daughters, mm. I wouldn't be sitting here. Yeah. Mm. And for anybody who's, you know, had those thoughts, you understand, like when you think back now, like how could I have thought that? You don't wake up in the morning being like, I hope today I'm, I, you know, in, in, I'm in a deep depression. Yeah. No one wakes up that way. It's, if we could snap out of it, we would snap out of it. Correct. The mind is just, it's wild what can yeah. happen when things become crossed up there or, you know, your hormones are whacked out and you're running on, like when you're running on cortisol levels that are so astronomically high, your nervous system, you cannot handle it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I am wondering after this journey of seeing all these people coming back to this doctor, what was it like accepting that you had hit burnout? If you're in the market for new glasses or sunglasses, then you need to check out Canadian brand Kits Eye Care. Kits has become my favorite place to shop for sunglasses because they offer an amazing selection of so many great styles and they are unbelievably affordable. They also have a huge selection of prescription eyeglasses and you can do a virtual try on while you are shopping online to really see how the styles will look on you. Kits is a Canadian owned company, which you know we love and they take pride in offering a wide selection, speedy service and superior craftsmanship. We have a super special offer for our Her community. This offer is unreal, friends. Head to kits.ca, that's K-I-T-S dot C-A, right now to choose your favorite pair of Kits brand prescription glasses or sunglasses priced at or up to $99, and you're going to get them for free when you use the code welcome. Did you hear that? For free. You can follow along and connect with Kits on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and LinkedIn at Kits I care. I love to follow along on Instagram to see the latest styles on Kits customers. And you can shop the entire Kits eyewear collection along with their curated selection of designer brands at kits.ca. Remember to use the code welcome to get your first pair of kits up to $99 free and then send us a DM and tell us which style you snagged. Happy shopping friends. Well, you know what? At that time... I, um, probably the day, two days before I went to the doctor, I remember lying on my bathroom floor and bawling, bawling and bawling. And just like saying, uh, I remember saying to God, like, you need, I, you have to end this. Like, I can't do this anymore. I cannot do this. I cannot, I need my life back. I need to be a mother and a role model. And it was like, all of a sudden, I, I had to call my doctor mm -hmm. and I had to, and I remember going in there and saying to him, this is the last thing I want to do is go on medication. This is the last thing I want to do, but I've done everything else and I need my life back. I need a quality of life and however long it takes me to get out of this and move forward. And I'll deal with the medication thing because I was so ashamed of being on medication. I was so ashamed of it. I was like, no, 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 no. And at, that point I had exhausted everything and I was, I was ready to die. 
like I was ready to die. And I, I remember that day on that, it was like so cold on the tile floor and I dropped the kids off at school and thank God they were in school because I don't know how I would have made it through days with them being home. But, and I called him and he was so good. And slowly it was like, I started to come out of this bubble and get my life back. And it did take a while. It, because the physical, I mean, I was so small, you guys. Like if, and I thought I looked good, but when I oh, look, you mean like physically? Physically, I was like mentally. Yeah, well, <laughs> every way you were feeling, no, everything no, makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. But looking back now, I'm like, oh, I looked so sick and sad and hollow mm. because it was like it, it was almost like I was going through a death but I was not 100% ready to go through that Mm -hmm. and grieve through that because, and and people, they're like, how could you not be ready to move forward? And I'm like, you know what? It was, it was part of my ego holding onto the old me because that's all that I knew for so long. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to get through this and then I'll be able to figure it out, right? I'll I'll get a grip on this. I'll be able to get back into like doing all the things I was doing and because I've dealt with all my crap here. I'm good, right? So it was still that when I say that I didn't learn my lesson at the rock bottom, it, it takes me a couple times. I'm a bit of a slow learner. <laughs> I think we all are. Come back around. I think we're all a bit of a slow learner. I think, One more time. You know, on that note, it's, it's something I've said before, um, and maybe people aren't going to agree with this, but I think I always equate it to marriage. And I'm like, you know, now I have, I am in a marriage, uh, one marriage. I have not gone through a divorce, but mm-hmm. I, I think what I've heard from my friends who have is it's not one big thing mm-hmm. that, that really makes you change your path. Yeah. It's usually a lot of little things over time. Yeah. The and straw that, that broke the camel's right? back. That's what yeah. they, it's not the yeah. rock that fell on the camel's head. No. Right? And, and I think that's why sometimes we go through these mm-hmm. and you hear these stories of going down to the very depths and you're like, and then they rose and they never made a mistake again. And you're yeah. like, no, because you can get over something really big, I actually think. Yeah. and But I think it's the tiny little moments every day Yeah, that end up kind of breaking you yeah. more. Hundred percent, right. and I think too when I think about my age, right? Okay, so 2010 seems so long ago, but again, I'm how I would have handled things now <clears throat> compared to them would be very different. But I also would not be who I am today Correct. to be helping, yeah, other people go through that. So when you know when I get out of this and I start going, getting back into life. And it's like a drug addict, right? It's like an alcoholic. When they um, when they start feeling good, when they go through, like, say, an OD, and they're close to like death, and they feel terrible, and they're like, "That's it, I'm, I'm done, I'm going to rehab." But then, you know, they start feeling a little better, and then they feel a little bit better, and they're like, "I don't really need rehab. I can do this on my own. Like, I can, I can get through this." And it was honestly it's for a me, false sense of security, totally. Totally. And I was the same way. I'm like, it's okay. I can start doing what I was doing again. Cause you know, I, I know that I can get through this and it's so warped thinking like, okay, but what if you went through a burnout again? But I'm like, that's not happening. You're like, it'll be a different outcome. Totally. I've learned my lesson. Right? I've done this before yeah. Yeah. and I, I got this. And so then I went into, and I don't want to talk, I mean, I don't want to talk about real estate really, but I mean, I feel like it does play into where I moved to in my next career, Mm. which was in 2013, 2012. So this was only like, you know, a year and a half after. And I started into real estate, which is a very hustle, grind, work all the time industry. And being my personality, I'm like, I'm all in. Like, there is no failure. This I'm going to be number one. That is it. I'm going to be making this much money. And I was getting back into that, uh, all that ego-driven crap, right? That same mentality. Oh, and I just, like, it makes me sick, really, when I think about it. But again, I had to do it. Mm. I had to do it. And I started going down that path. Now, at this time, I was going through a divorce. So, starting this new career, 
that is like still got, you know, younger kids and going through a divorce and being like, "Mm mm-hmm, I'm making it. Single mom, making it, recovered from burnout. Here we go. And I jump in, all in. How long did that last? (laughs) Well, so I start to, and again, I start buying into the whole societal societal expectation of what we're supposed to do in that industry be available all the time work with anybody you know good luck having any holidays good luck seeing your family and i'm like whatever like i'll figure it out i'll figure it out till the point where i was i was at that and my kids were like um mom like you need to get out like why are you always on your phone did you see that play i'd be at their game oh no i was on my phone all the little side effects were starting to come back. That real mm. wired and tired, um, just feeling like just totally exhausted. But something else was different this time because I was like my, the weight loss I was experiencing was I was eating. That was the difference. And so I figured I'll go to the doctor, see what's up. They take one look at me and they send me for an ultrasound for my thyroid. And I knew, I knew before I even had the ultrasound and the biopsy that I'm like, I probably have cancer now. And I did. Mm. And that was the They're next like, spoiler thing. alert. <laughs> <laughs> cancer. <laughs> Only we Breaking can laugh news. about this. Breaking, Breaking news. news. Breaking news. Breaking news. <laughs> Heather's got cancer. And thyroid cancer, which is so interesting because, again, if you know anything about energy spaces and chakras and stuff like that, the throat is about stifling, you know, when you block your throat chakra, that is your voice, your truth. And knowing that now, back then I was like, oh, great, now I have thyroid cancer. This is just great, right? And that is when things really started it was like the epiphany it was like okay so this this has to change because i don't know what's going to happen here Mm, it really sunk in for you a little bit more yeah yeah you were like i can't ignore this as much yes Mm -hmm. and that is when i was like okay you know what i cannot continue on my career the way i'm going i either have to quit it or i need to figure out a different way because I'm one of those people and my dad always laughs. It's like you always walk to the beat of your own drum. And I do. And, but I got caught up in the, what I was supposed to be doing or what I thought the world expected of me or what I thought, you know, the industry expected of me. And I'm like, I, I really don't care anymore. I actually don't. When I get done with this, cause it was two surgeries and it was time off work. Right. And it, and, that would have drove me nuts, you know, a year ago. It would have drove me crazy back then if it would, you know, my previous year of real estate, if I would have been taking a month off. It's like, yeah. whoa. It would have felt like, um, I could not remember the word <laughs> career. <laughs> you guys, oh. the word career okay. escaped Is it me. I was like, I cannot <laughs> find it for you. I'm we sorry. All must- <laughs> Career suicide <laughs> is what I was. <laughs> I love yes. it. Yes, yes. like yeah. that would have been like you're done. Oh yeah, like, like you'll never forget catch it. Catch up exactly, yeah. exactly. And I'm like, no, you know what? I I need to really trust myself. Trust that I have built this business mm. that people are gonna be like, yeah, you know what? it's okay. Everything's going to be okay. And I did. And it was so hard to trust, man. It was hard because I'm like, it's the unknown. And that's what drives everyone crazy. Right. Well, and what I'm just realizing is how often now we really don't trust what we've built. Mm -hmm. And we really, and I say we, as in like everybody listening, like we really don't trust in our businesses. No, and I'm going to speak to businesses because that's what we're talking about, right? That we could take time off mm-hmm. um, and come back and maybe have to, you know, fix some things yeah. or iron out some details, but yeah. we really have a lack of trust in ourselves. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And it was, um, 
it was then I was like, okay, what, why did I go into this business? And I always come back to my why. And, and when I'm working with other you know, women and I'm like, why did you start this? Was it to work all the time? Was it to never take holidays? Was it to like be on your phone 24 seven? Because if that was why, then just keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, you're like, good. Honestly. But for me and for 90 <laughs> boxes checked. <laughs> Goals <laughs> successful. <laughs> Hashtag goals level up. <laughs> so Winner. <laughs> True that. <laughs> um, but I thought, yeah, that's actually that's those are none of the reasons. Which what was your why? Well, and my why was okay. You know what? I want I want to be my own boss and control my schedule and control the money I make. And basically, you know what, empower other women to do the same. And I wasn't, I wasn't doing any of that. And here I am raising two daughters being like, what am I showing them? This is the only way you can have a business. Yeah, kill yourself for it. Right? Yeah. And I'm like, why would anybody go into business? It's, and it's, it's crazy when people are like, well, you just, you know, nobody wants their nine to five. And I'm like, okay, but you know what? Actually, a nine to five is a pretty sweet Nine to two is even better. And I can create my own nine to two if I really want to. Dude, I want to do like a nine to 10. Let's just be honest. <laughs> I'm more like a 10 to one. And some days it is that. One hour. <laughs> Erica's like a zero to zero. <laughs> I'm all about, I just want money to appear in my bank account. I'm like, I said Ta-da-da. to Nick the other day, I was like sitting all sad, you guys. I was like, like he's like, what? And I'm like, I just, want all the money and to do nothing and he was like um and i'm like i just need you to agree with me right now i just need you to validate these feelings and he's like okay he's like i'm gonna go work now (laughs) well get out of here you peasant (laughs) when we get caught but you think about it okay you think about how we're Mm pre-programmed through school think about it starts in school right school is based off the industrial revolution which is like okay here's what you do you go get up they groom us you have breakfast you go to work you take your coffee at this time you take your lunch at this time you get off at this time then you go home then you eat supper then you do this blah 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 repeat which side tangent (laughs) isn't it crazy how we are still living in a time zone and in a time table let's say that was created yeah. For a time that we are no longer in, hundred percent. But we're still like, yeah. Oh well, well this is how we have to do it. Yeah, yeah. And then you look over at the Swedes, I think, <laughs> yes. who are working like four days, hundred percent, and their kids don't start school until like grade. I fact check whatever. <laughs> yeah, come Everyone's for like, me. Did Just you hear what Erica said? <laughs> <laughs> this is. They're like, she's not even Swedish. No, <laughs> yeah. But like, they don't start their kids in school till like mm-hmm. grade two like yeah. till the, their kids are like seven mm. yeah so it, i'm just like we have created we are living off of a well it's archaic structure to me it's like that yeah. is not relevant anymore no we're all pro four-day work week yeah i'm more like two <laughs> <laughs> by eric's account it's not even one <laughs> <laughs> but it is right and we get in then we get into this this mindset of the only way but the only way to be this way mm. is do it this way and it's like okay first of all who i i need to meet the person and i was like dudes if you're listening if you get offended well whatever you do i don't even know if we have any male listeners yeah that my husband (laughs) gives some some males listening (laughs) but i think like you know a a dude must have really made that up that it's like this is how especially in the real estate industry i'm like this is how you gotta make it and i'm like do you have kids do you like who's going to go to all those evening activities and who's going to yeah. do all that stuff? Right. And it's, you can 100% do it by working smarter, being you like embracing like your why and, and honestly being authentic because what I find when we go down this crazy, like snowball, every time I've gone into the snowball of like, panic and lack of and scarcity is this my business gonna work blah, blah. it's because i'm not being who i really am it's because i'm trying to like be like sally smith on instagram and well she's doing this and it's work is it is it working we only see what she posts right and i'm like that's not me mm. like 
all this time, for how many years I have been living a lie, basically. As messed up as that sounds, and I'm like, I'm done. I am done with burning myself out. I am done doing things because that's the way they've always been done. So how do you how do you get out of burnout then? How did you get out of burnout? And probably mm. years later now, how do you encourage others? Yeah. You know, to well, get out it, and also to prevent. Yeah. 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 This does not happen overnight. So when people have said to me, oh man, how did you do this? Like, it looks so easy. It was It is one of the hardest things you will ever do in your life. And it honestly all comes down to personal growth. Mm. And that is one of the most difficult investments most people, like they they can part with their money with everything else. It's like, oh yeah, like $10 coffees. You know, I was one of them, right? But they're like, invest in myself. Well, how? And I'm like, but you want all these changes, the one person who has to make the change is you, but you won't invest in the one person that can actually change everything. Okay, everyone, for all my beauty enthusiasts, makeup newbies, and anyone in between, I need to share something exciting with you. Award-winning makeup artist Kelsey Ray has an incredible new offering that will help you streamline your skincare and makeup routine. Personalized makeup lists. Kelsey is my personal go-to makeup artist when I need my makeup done, and I know selecting the right skincare and makeup products can be overwhelming more often than not. Navigating a sea of products and cryptic labels can leave you feeling lost in your pursuit of that flawless, radiant glow. Don't worry, Kelsey has got you covered. I've actually had my fair share of sending her DMs while I'm in a store, showing her products and asking what she thinks of them. Begin your journey to luminous skin and a makeup collection tailored exclusively for you with a meticulously curated line of makeup products perfectly aligning with your wants and needs. Now here's how it works. You will fit out an in-depth form, but don't worry, it's fun, that covers everything from your skin type, tone, to your preferences for makeup that you already wear. Kelsey will then review your information and head to the drawing board, putting together the absolute best recommendations for you based on the information you shared. You'll receive a fully customized form inclusive of personalized recommended products, tips and tricks and application advice from Kelsey. You'll be well on your way to feeling confident with your skincare and makeup products. You know we have a special offer for our Her Crew. You can use code HER10 to save 10% off your personalized makeup list with Kelsey. Find and follow along with Kelsey on Instagram at KelseyRay underscore MUA and head to www.kelseyraymakeup to book your personalized makeup list now. You can also find the link to book in in our show notes. And remember to use that code HER10 to save. Well, I've always said the best investment you can make, and I'm sure you agree with this, is in yourself. Yes. Because no one can take it away from you. 100%. The economy crashes, things happen, whatever. But like whatever you put into yourself is put into you. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's so easy, but yet it's so hard because we're so used to doing things this way or but it's so comfortable right and that's where the ego comes in of trying to keep you like but it's comfortable and you don't want to make this choice and I mean the biggest thing for me honestly was like okay (coughs) I need to spend money in me Mm. I need to stop buying just random books and whatever and that's great like that's great but I read them and then it wasn't taking action Mm. there was no accountability can you talk about that? Oh, I love talking yeah, about that. Yeah, for a that. second. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I realized I was a massive consumer. Like, and I thought I was, we love to tell ourselves we're really doing something when we're consuming. So you are, you're actually, yes, you are. You are reading, you are listening, you are writing. And there, there's, those are like all amazing things. And then you've got like this whole list of all these like really awesome things you want to do so there you think like but i'm working but i'm busy but this is what i'm doing i'm planning but then there's never any action because we are professional consumers and when i really really noticed that was social media yeah that's yeah. people just consume, 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 consume. Yeah. Save, screenshot, yeah. consume. Yeah. And I'm rinse, guilty. Repeat. I'm st- oh, you know what? totally. I, yeah. I still yeah. can no, get no, down no. that. And then I need to actually. We are have, not holier than thou. Yeah. I need to have a, a talk with myself and say, okay, Heather, um, 
so you've got all these things and you're like, yeah, I'm so fired up. Like, look at all the stuff. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, but I'm, I'm still, I'm, I still get freaked out in that change, right? Because it's that change and people are like, oh, well, you coach women. I still get, a, I still get scared, right? I, I still okay. have those thoughts. If we all waited to do something <laughs> until we were perfect, like yeah. if we were, if, if, if anyone wants to be like, well, you, I'm like, listen, mm-hmm. you can teach what you know. Yeah. Right. And that doesn't mean that every once in a while you won't be like, huh, I just learned like the idea that we have like, yeah, just the <laughs> idea that like even us as social media mentors and, and management, like yeah. if every once in a while, like I still actually have to go learn something. Mm-hmm. Like Every we, day. Wh- who was it that just said can always be willing to be a student? Oh, yeah. it's like one of the greatest gifts you can give yourself, yeah. right? But it's true, right? We think we know everything because we've been doing this for so long. And um, so when when I really, and, and again, it was not this like, oh, all of a sudden I'm out of burnout. Mm. Oh, all of a sudden I'm my authentic self because there are days I struggle with it, right? I'm like, well, and you put boundaries in place major major which boundaries. i think that's a big piece yeah and and pe- i remember when i started talking about boundaries and people were like oh that's so aggressive and i'm like no that is how you see it that is your perception because somebody has told you that boundaries were a negative thing well and what's your definition of boundaries, like boundaries how would you define it to me boundaries are saying yes to yourself Mm -hmm. saying yes to the things that serve you and your higher self because too many times when we talk about boundaries people like oh i can't say no and i'm like okay well let's just flip this let's think of it as saying yes to things that you actually really want to do and that really serve you and it's like and that was a game changer for me Right, because you don't always when it's like no, 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 no. Like it, it, it is very negative, mm-hmm. right? Whereas when it's flip the script to be saying yes, and then the no's just happen, mm-hmm. right? They just kind of fall into place. And I mean, of course, there's things I do that it's like, oh, I can't wait to get up today and do the laundry or do the dishes. No, but things that are like when I have somebody who I know does not we just don't jive or align in business. That little ego part kind of slips in there like, yeah, but you know what? You're going to get paid for that. And I'm like, yeah, but you know what? I'm going to hate every minute of it. And it's going to drive me nuts. And that's where I have to then either say, you know what? We are maybe, you know, not the greatest fit right now, but here's the, here's the thing. I can refer you to somebody who is amazing that is going to work with you and do the best for you because I'm not, I'm not. Okay. So I want to ask a tangible question for our listeners, our audience. Listeners. How do people recognize? Cause I think this is a key thing is, uh, you know, in the past and I'm not perfect at it, but in the past, all of a sudden I'll like look at something and I'll be like, how did I get here? Like, how did mm-hmm. I say yes to this mm-hmm. when I knew it wasn't a good idea? Do you have any tips on how to recognize when you're about to say yes to something you should say no to. Mm -hmm. Like, is there any little tell that you have? Like, you're like, I know this is silly, but all of a sudden it's like maybe even physical Mm -hmm. or I don't know. I'm just curious if you have anything that is is a good tool or something to use. Yeah. For me, it's 100% physical. And I'm very, very much in tune with my intuition and my energy and and I believe everybody has that gift. It's just some people choose not to maybe, I don't know what the word is. They, they choose to maybe ignore it or they're also disconnected from it. Yeah. And, and when you're out of alignment, which I was for a very long time, I ignored it. I ignored it because it, I was just like, eh, just a body sensation. Now, it is a feeling and the body does not lie. Your mind will lie to you. Your mind will lie to you a lot. Your body will never lie to you. So when I'm dealing with somebody and they say, okay, this happened. And I'm like, how did that feel? And they're like, well, like it felt, you know, I felt sick in my stomach or I felt these little like butterflies. I'm like, okay. So think back to a time 
because it all resonates and it, and it without getting too deep into like you know past traumas and things like that everything resonates from something that has happened to you as a child and that sticks with you and it comes up when you are in situations where you're being tested well i was talking with someone the other day and just um was saying this person was saying that basically you know when they were getting angry yeah. at you know um 33 year old them was yeah. getting angry it was actually nine year old them yes it's 100 percent. Right? it's usually so we're, we're not usually living out our current you know if we haven't dealt with stuff yes. right it's like our childhood like it's a trigger for something that has happened in your past and yeah. you're acting acting out of that yeah age or state or situation totally and it's usually between the ages of like that six to like well five six to nine years old when you start school now i'm not talking like massive child abuse and things like that right that can happen very early but things that maybe i always use this i use this for me when i was in was a grade three and remember friend i'm older than you guys but friendship pins we used to make these friendship pins that were like little little safety pins put beads on them and then you give them to people and we put them on our shoelaces oh, that's so cute and i remember i had this mike klemke and i've talked about him before <laughs> and honestly i mean i have let it go but still he, see how that fired me up a little bit yeah. that was my body so maybe i got some work to do on that still i still got some work to do on that <laughs> but i remember giving him this friendship and, and he looked at me and he's like I don't take friendship pins from ugly girls. And I was like, oh. well, I don't give friendship pins to <laughs> ugly boys. That's what new, this year, right? Now, current you would say. Yes. And, but at that time, now, you know, you, you don't think about that again, but mm. that stuck with me because I, I did not deal with it at that time. Right. And that's all like, trauma people think it has to be some like horrific car accident or it's it can be anything something somebody says to you or they look at you wrong and i carry that i think of things that i did through my you know teenage years and young adulthood it was like attention seeking and it because that was coming to the surface right and it was just never dealt with till and now i'm like man that really, and it took me going through coaching, right? And having a coach, and I still have a coach and I probably always will, but going through learning about me and why do I do the things I do? Why do I think think the things I think? Why is my mindset this way? Like, what are my belief systems and are they even mine or were they my parents, right? And we're carrying around all this stuff, not even knowing if it's ours. And then one day we realize, that's not even me. Like, I actually do not even like what I'm doing for a career. I don't even like the people I hang out with. And you realize, okay, I can either just keep going on because it's comfortable. And a lot of people do, right? Or I can do the hard work. And it, 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 is, it is difficult because you are, it's like a death. You're letting go of that version of yourself that that never really was truly you. It was that person. You needed to be that person to get to where you are. Well, it was what now. was safe. It, it was. was what was safe for you, even if it wasn't um, safe in terms of, yeah. you know, if, if that person experiences burnout, but it was still yeah. safe. It's like sometimes it's safe for, peop- for people to stay in burnout. Yeah. Right. Um, that doesn't. I understand what you're saying. You're, Basically, people have to adapt yeah. to their yeah. environment, right? right? And sometimes 100%. we do things that are yeah. um, not authentic well, it's to us we, or outside of ourselves, right? Because yeah. we have to adapt. It's like we yeah. say survival mode, yes. right? Like you just did what you had to to survive. Yeah. Yes. So I'm curious now because now you're like coaching on this and you're yeah. coaching individuals um, on how to avoid burnout and create the life mm-hmm. they want. Yeah. Can you share some tips that mm-hmm. you tell your um, mentees or your coaching clients on like how to set up the life they really want. Cause I feel like right now this is what people are hungry for. They're hungry for, mm-hmm. we have a lot of people starting businesses, a lot of people like yeah. wanting this. And then I think they go start a business and it's that joke, right? 
gave up a nine to five to work 24 yeah. seven. So I'm like, how do we avoid that? Can you give some tools on like, even how to set up your day or like, I don't know. I'm just curious on yeah. what you do. Just so you know, I never like those posts on social media. Yeah. They drive me nuts. Yeah. Like that when they're sitting in the pool with the laptop, I'm like, are you actually? No, you're not. And it's not funny. <laughs> That is not a funny post. I was in the shower and a $300 million Shopify notification (laughs) popped up on my phone. (sighs) Yeah. Well, you know what? Here's, here's what I would say is the most important thing that I do. Every single woman and I just say woman, cause that's really what I deal with, um, is we really go back to the basics, right? And it's because so many times we're like, oh, I want this really like great business because we see somebody else. Yeah. Right. And we only see what they want to show us. And then it's like, okay, well, why are you getting into this business? Why are you doing it? Right. So it's, it's getting total clarity on why, because I feel too many of us jump in without really having total clarity of what, what we actually want. Like, what do we really want? And when I, you know what? We always do a discovery call going into it. And it's like, well, what do you really want? Well, I want more money. I want more time. And I'm like, no, 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 no. What do you really want? Well, you probably have to get really clear you, and very specific. hundred percent. And that is the difference right there. Because what is more money? What is more time? What is being a, you know, great I don't know, real estate agent or a great coach or great lawyer. What is, what is that? What is great? What's being a great mom? So many of them, they're like, well, I just want to be a really good mom and, you know, have time for my kids. I'm like, what's a good mom? And they're like, I don't know. I'm like, well, how can we be it? Right. And that's, I, that's the biggest thing I learned from my coach was you're throwing stuff out there, hoping it happens. You don't even know what you actually want to happen. Well, and you might not even know what to do with it when it does then. Right. Cause you won't recognize it because you're not clear on it. Yeah. It's, it's, it's almost like what just, it made me think of is when you ask someone what they want and they're like more money yep. and you're like, okay, so now you get more money and now what? Well, I want more money. Well, yeah. I want more. And you know, you almost just keep, yeah. If you don't get clear, you won't even know even if you've hit what you really want. I don't know. That's messy. It's, but it's just true though. Of. Right. And it's like, the most common things are, I just want to be happy. That is such a common one. I'm like, well, the only person, the only person who can do that and change that is you. So if you're looking for happiness externally, because I was back in the day, I was looking at that through friends. I was looking at it through materialistic goods, right? Name brand, whatever. I was looking at it through busyness. That I thought was going to make me happy. Yeah. Where no, it all, because you can be anywhere. And if you are truly happy, it is internal. Yeah. Right. And so it is, it is real. It's, it's, it seems like, so, well, that's so easy. It's one of the hardest things you'll ever do is to get real clear Mm -hmm. on what it is you want. And so many of us are like, oh, I feel guilty if that's what I really want. And I'm like, why? Why? Who told you you should feel guilty about that? And again, it comes back to society, right? What we hear, well, you're not supposed to feel that way. Says who? Like who, who ever told you that you, you shouldn't feel that way, right? Why do we feel guilty? Because we want all these things for ourselves. Like we are meant to live a joyous life, but that's not the way things are portrayed. It's like, oh, everything's got to be hard, right? You know, being successful, it is going to be really hard. And I'm like, why? Why does it have to be so hard? Because that's what we're told. And then we go along with that instead of challenging, whoa, no, it doesn't have to be hard. Not when I know exactly what I want and exactly who I am. And it takes work of letting go of a lot of the belief systems and a lot of the, you know, our habits that we have right now. <laughs> it And it doesn't happen overnight. It doesn't. But that is where, I, I mean, if I can give a tip, that is like 
number one, because you can write down everything. Oh, yeah, I want to have this, you know, great office. And okay, but what do you actually want? And why? Are you doing this? Well, I think it's like a smart goal, right? Like yeah. specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and what's the time frame? Yeah. Right? Like you need to really get clear totally on all of those things yeah. so that you can have clarity, yeah. you know, to be able to hit what you want. Right. So it's, it's a map, right? Yeah. And I always I use this analogy. If you were driving from here to New York, would you just go? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> We'd end up in some weird places. Yeah, you're probably. gonna go, you're gonna put in and and Google Maps or whatever is gonna tell you exactly every turn, every corner, every stop. Every, they're going to tell you all of that. Well, and guess what? If a construction zone comes yeah. up, then you reroute around it. Yeah. So it's not to say you can't change your path. Yeah. Right. But 100%. there's things that you can do to get to your destination. Yeah. Because all the other things then fall into place yeah 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 right okay but the biggest thing is clarity and and when you get real clarity that also gives you real clarity on who you really are well what's important to you i imagine yes and in order then to set boundaries and say yes to yourself you have to know yourself Mm. because then you're just saying yeah no i don't know and then you once you you start to become so in tune with yourself, you don't even question, right? You don't question the feelings that come out. You don't, you know, you could be chatting with a potential client and you're just like, nope, Mm. I already know, I already know, Mm. right? And then you start attracting because that's one of my biggest things, right? Is the attraction, not the chasing. Mm. Because when we're on the chase, it's just like a hamster wheel. Mm. Where you're trying to catch up constantly. Yeah. And, and to, it's, to position yourself from a place of, like you said, um, ahead of it yeah. and attracting instead of chasing. Yeah. That was so good, Heather. Oh, I, really I just like that. I feel like I could just, I get so into it. And I, um, I never want to say that every day is, you know, is a bed of roses. Yeah. I mean, I still have days where I'll struggle with that you know, whether you want to call it imposter syndrome or whatnot to be like, Hey, is this really, is this really who I am? And, um, you know, am I being like really true to myself or am I just trying to impress somebody or nobody really cares at the end of the day? That's the thing. Nobody actually really cares. No. Cause they're all so concerned about themselves. hundred percent. A hundred percent. And, honest. and when you learn that and you can like really embrace that. And when I see my daughters and I'm like, man, they're embracing, they're embracing some of this stuff at the ages of like almost 17 and 21. And I'm like, wow, they are light years ahead yeah, of what I was at that age. And if I had to be the one to go through all the crap that I went through, because I do believe that was, that was my journey. And I will still, still probably end up going through, you know, something just, it'll just be a little bit smarter. Yeah. And, and able to spend you know, two weeks in Europe being, hey, I'm good. Mm -hmm. My business surviving. Mm -hmm. And I delegated and I was smart about it, right? And it was because I know who I truly am and what I actually really want. And I think that's so amazing. I think one of my biggest takeaways from today is to just really get clear, you Mm -hmm. know? And I think for our listeners that are listening to really get clear on who they are, what they want from life and Mm -hmm. all areas um, is super cool. Yeah. Um, a question that we ask all of our listeners mm-hmm. yes. is what is the best piece of advice you've ever been given or your favorite piece of advice to give? You know what? I will, it, this comes, it comes from my dad and, um, it was my grad. He, cause my dad has always been, we're very, very close. And, I remember he gave me this bracelet for grad and it was engraved on the back and it, it said, always be true to yourself. And I'll, I'll come back to that. It's no like crazy quote or it's, it's just those words that I always come back to when it's like, man, am I making this decision based on, you know, having others approve of it or am I based on it because I'm, I'm being true. To myself, and when you base those decisions 
on being true to yourself, things just start to flow. Like it's you're in that state of flow and you become more and more comfortable with being there and you'll still go through the waves. But if you can always come back to yourself, because you're the only one who's always there for you, right? Yeah. That's that's it. And so it's it's coming back to you, coming home to you and just finding that flow. Well, and that comes full circle because if you invest in you, yeah. right, you're coming home to you and totally. a better you, right? Yeah. Which I think is amazing. Um, I would love our listeners to know how they can connect with mm. you, how they can find you. Okay. Um, shout yourself out, your handles, your website. Um, yeah. Yeah. What you do and where people can find you. Well, you can find me at, <laughs> you're going to love this one, Hustle Culture Hater Club on Instagram. Um the podcast is also the Hustle Culture Hater Club on pretty much every platform. Platform, And my website is thehchc.com. Yes. Lots of fun stuff. If you want to get more of Heather or be coached or mentored, yes. right? Mm-hmm. Working through boundaries and burnout. Yeah. Um, definitely the person to go yeah. to. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I guess I will mention because... You know what, if you're from, if you're local, you will know I'm in real estate. So um, The Real Heather Kehoe is my Instagram for real estate. Amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much for sitting down with us today. Thank you, you, ladies. It was awesome. We loved having you. Thank you everyone for joining us on this episode of the Her Podcast. If you want to follow along with us, you can find us on Instagram and TikTok at it's.her.podcast. We can't wait to see you there.